welcome to my channel so in today's video i'm going to be doing a walkthrough of rod and staff's second grade curriculum so if you guys get this and you get like the package there are four student books so workbook one is for lessons one to 40. workbook two is lessons 41 to 82. workbook three is lessons 83 to 123 and finally workbook four is lessons 124 to 170. so there are two teachers manuals this time around so the first one does workbooks one to two and the second one is workbooks three to four so i'm going to show you inside one of the teachers manuals now here are some additional things that i don't have but you can get um, the practice sheets. So if you guys use the first grade, um, they also have practice sheets for second grade, but the practice sheets are in a workbook instead of being loose like how they were in the first grade. Um, so, but that's just something separate you have to buy. Also, there are quizzes this time around and the quizzes are found in the practice sheets workbook. Um, here are some additional things you can get. There's a reproducible supplemental pack, um, and these are some of the things that you would find in it. Here are some teaching aids um, that you can use if you would like. And then this part is just telling you, you know, about the different parts of the curriculum, the different things they'll be going over. Okay. Okay, so they teach triplets in this curriculum. That's what they call it, triplets. First grade, they were calling them twins. <laughs> now they're triplets. So it's three numbers um, that essentially, you know, go together and you can have the different facts from it. So if you are familiar with other curriculums, they would call this a number bond or they call it like, you know, whole part part or total part part. Um, that's essentially what this is. They just don't call it that. They call it a triplet. And it says it makes four facts. So these are known as fact families um, within other curriculums. This curriculum, for whatever reason, they don't call it all that. <laughs> but that's what it is if you're familiar with, you know, those terms. It's just basically showing the relationship between numbers. And you can use just these three numbers to have two subtraction stories and two addition stories. This book um, goes through addition families 11 to 18 and subtraction families 11 to 18. Here is telling you the lessons and the skills that are learned. If you go to the um, Milestone Books website and you look up, you know, this book, you just scroll down and it has all the lessons, like what each lesson is. I will link it in the description. Just remember to scroll down and you'll see it once you're scrolling down. Anyway, that's what all of this is. Okay, so here we have the objectives of, you know, what the student is going to be learning. This is the student worksheet. Okay, so this is what the student is looking at, but of course yours has the answers to it. Um, here's a little preparation. So this was made for the classroom, so they do have some chalkboard activities um, that you can do. If you guys have a board, you can still do them, or at least if you have, you know, for this particular lesson, it's with the coins. Um, so if you just take the coins out, and this here is talking about place value. So if you guys have like those um, base 10 blocks, you can use those. Okay, so this is just like the preparation, and then here it would be the actual lesson where it says class time. Um, so it says, place a handful of coins in front of the children, um, find a nickel, a 10 cent coin, and then do the money samples. So then you would do this. So they're just going to add those up, see how much that is. Place value, here's some drill time. Um, and then it gets into these clovers. Um, and that's just, like a little cute way that they try to use to introduce the facts. The thing that's different about the second grade is with first grade, it was just two pages for the students to do. But in second grade, it's actually four. So you have 
those two for the student to do and then these two. So the lesson's a little bit longer. Here they're talking about shapes. This is mental math. Um, and then they have like different practice sheets that you can do if you would like, right? So now this is another lesson. This is lesson 84. Looks the same way. The main thing that's different is on the even number lessons, you have the speed drill. And it was like that in the first grade too. The thing that's different is that it's in the actual student workbook now. There's not a separate book for the speed drill. So if you don't do the speed drill, the lesson will be like a little bit shorter than, you know, if you did do it. Um, and that's just basically how the teacher's manual works. Okay, so I'm just going to flip to the back so I can show you here. Um, they have the answers to the practice sheets. So if you guys get the practice sheet, this is what, you know, they look like. And the pink is the answers. A lot of math fact practice. I think these practice sheets are more like homework sheets since they're, this is done in the classroom. So I think that there's a lot of practice within the actual children's workbook, the student workbook. So to me, you don't really have to do this practice sheet. That's why I didn't get it this time around because I didn't really use it that much in the first grade. Okay, and then it also has the answers to the quizzes back here too. And then it has some other like worksheets about graphs. And this is the um, the teacher's manual for workbooks one to two. It's the same thing, so I'm not going to uh, really go into all of that, but the back is, you know, the same with the answers to the first practice sheets workbook. I like that they did put it in a workbook instead of having, you know, just the loose pages. Okay, now this is the student workbook, so I'm just going to flip through this a little bit. So Rod and Staff is a traditional math program. Um, the, the main two kind of math programs are, you know, traditional and conceptual math. Um, so this one is considered a traditional math program. But I think it's really good at getting your math facts down. Or your child getting their math back down, I should say. That's something like me. And this is a um, Christian curriculum, so there are some Bible verses. But if you would like to use this and you're more of a secular homeschooler, you can just skip that part. Okay, I just wanted to tell you that the first book here is more of a review of first grade. So I think that's why if you guys use Memoria Press, they will use the second half of the first grade book because first grade there are two um, workbooks so they'll use the second workbook and this book for first grade so yeah you can do whatever you want if you want to use it or not um, but if you, i think if you're just sliding right through from the first grade you may not have to use it just use your judgment and look through it and see you know is this something you would like to do with your child if they need more practice with um, the previous math facts that they had learned in first grade. Okay, so I just want to show you like how we do some of the lessons. Um, if you guys want, you can get the Memoria Press teacher plans. You don't have to use their full second grade curriculum. They have separate teacher um, like plans or schedules. I, I can't remember what, what they call that. <laughs> Uh, for the different subjects and you can just buy that you don't have to buy the whole workbook um, the whole um, 
teacher's guide if you're not using like every single subject. Um, but anyway, I just want to show you here. So um, what we'll do is when my daughter's like learning like the new facts, I'll just have her, you know, work through that this one page here and then when she goes to practice it i would just have her pick which two rows she wants to do and then here we just do the bottom row but if you look in the teacher's manual okay so i'll just go to the teacher's manual for a second just to show you okay so sometime in the teacher's manual they have this part here, right? So this is something we we'll, would we'll go through together, right? But we may not do all five of them. We can do three of them on the board. And then she'll pick which row she wants to do and that she can do by herself. And like with this part here, she'll just pick two of them to do. And you know, that's it. Because I feel like they give you a ton of practice that we don't have to do every single one, but everybody's different. If you think you have to do every single one, then just go ahead, you know? It's your homeschool, your way, right? <laughs> if you think your child needs a lot of practice, then, you know, go ahead. Um, like this here, we did on the board. So a lot of times we might do on the board orally, and then she does that. Um, this is something we can also do orally, or sometimes I'll play like a video of counting by twos so that we're not always, you know, doing it here. Um, then she's picking the two rows to do. So yeah, that's just how um, we do it. And we sometimes will do like two pages in one day. And sometimes we'll do one page a day. Like we just try to figure it out ourselves. But um, let me know how you guys, if you have used this curriculum before, let me know how you plan it out. How do you, um, with your student work through the student workbook because I kind of feel like it can be like a lot you know what I mean so I think that I was surprised that it's four pages this time around um so that's why I try to like cut it down because I feel like it's gonna be like a little bit of a lot and you know my daughter's still little <laughs> she doesn't want to write all this so um she's really good with writing and has a really um good like pencil grip like she draws a lot so she's great with writing but then sometimes you know you don't want to sit around and do this you know what I mean <laughs> so that's another reason why I try to like cut it um into like two days to do things sometimes we'll do you know the coins here like this where she'll count it or I'll just put it on the table and then she can count them that way but let me know if you guys have used this curriculum how did you divide up um the lessons okay that's it <laughs> That's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.